And this week, we're talking totally Tennessee, because you can see some amazing animals without going too far. Today, we're going to be talking about how good neighbors come in all forms, including in the Virginia opossum. We're going to be going over how, despite being ordinary animals that you see every day, Virginia opossums are actually extraordinary animals. And they do a lot of good to help us because they are good neighbors. And uh, in order to repay them, we have to figure out how we're going to do that. So let's get into it first by learning a little bit about Virginia opossums. Now, Grizz here is going to be playing with her uh, toy. She's got some food in here, so she's got to figure out how to get it out. And she actually has a couple of different adaptations that help her to grab that food. Now, you might have seen her gorgeous tail here, and you'll notice that it's completely bald. So she has no fur on that tail whatsoever, and that's so that she can get around well in trees. It's what we call prehensile. So if you stick up your finger like this, and then you wiggle it a little bit, that's what her tail can do. It does that grabbing thing so that she can grab onto branches and make sure that she can keep her balance up in the trees. A lot of people think that they like to hang by their tails, and when they're a bit younger they can, but Grizz is an adult now, so she doesn't really use her tail to hang upside down. She just uses it for balance. But she has another adaptation that helps her to keep herself up in the trees, and those are actually on her feet. So you might see on her back feet over here, that she actually has five fingers, just like us, and one of them is kind of like a thumb. It's opposable. So she can move her thumbs like this and rotate them backwards to hold on to a branch, just like we can, which I think is pretty awesome. It also helps her so that she can grab things, just like we do. She has really dexterous or mobile hands. Her hands move a lot like ours, so that she can pick up and get all sorts of things. She's also got her blanket over here in case she nice feels like she might need somewhere cozy to go. But she's having a great time exploring on the table. And uh, as she's eating, you might see some of her teeth. Now, these guys have incredible teeth. They actually have the most teeth for any land mammal in the world. They have 50 teeth in her little tiny head. So we only have about 28 to 32, depending on if you have your wisdom teeth removed. But Grizz here has 50 teeth in her mouth. And they're all different shapes and kinds, just like ours, because she likes to eat lots of different things. Right now, she's getting some biscuits. She loves her biscuits. She also gets some yogurt to help with her tummy, some veggies, and some other stuff that we'll talk about a little bit later. Now, she might be super cute, but at this point, you're probably thinking, how does she make a good neighbor? Well, she has a couple of different ways that she is an awesome animal to have in the backyard. She's really liking this enrichment, so I'll get some of the food out for it. She's doing a great job. Um, so these guys are nocturnal, which means that they like to sleep during the day and come awake at night, which is awesome because it means that they are out of our way. We don't have to worry about running into them. Um, if you're out in your backyard, you are most likely not going to see them, although sometimes they do travel during the day if they're in the winter and they need some warmth to be able to look for food. Another way that they're super helpful, though, is this food that we're talking about. <coughs> now that you can see some of her food out, Grizz has some sweet potatoes, some broccoli, some carrot, some of her biscuit, as well as her uh, fruit. And that's because these guys are omnivores. We like to call them omnivores because they like to eat all different things. She likes her veggies and she likes her meat. But that makes her really awesome because she's able to keep different populations of things in control. So by eating fruit, she's able to walk around and eat fruit and then walk to another place and eat something else. And she might poop during that time. And that means that that seed from the fruit that she eats, from the fruit that she ate, is in a really nice fertilizer packet in her poop. So it helps those seeds to grow and it actually makes her a seed disperser which means that she helps other plants grow just by eating them, which is pretty awesome. But she's also an omnivore like we're talking about, so she likes to eat things like bugs. Bugs are her favorite things. She gets all sorts of protein sources, but bugs are one of her favorite things. And that's because in the wild, these guys are specialists at eating one little tiny bug. They suck our blood, just like a vampire. And you might be thinking of mosquitoes right now, but there's actually another bug that does that called the tick. Now ticks are little <coughs> tiny animals and they're mostly in the grass. 
So when you're walking around, when you're hiking, they often will brush up onto you, and then they start sucking your blood. And it's no fun. And because they're taking blood from different animals, they can actually give us diseases. But Grizz here has three layers of fur, which makes it really hard for those ticks to get her blood. So when she's out walking through the forest looking for her food, she picks up those ticks on her fur right here, and she is able to uh, pick those off at the end of the night. She takes them off like this. They haven't gotten any of her blood, but she picks them off, and they're a nice little snack. And then they're not around to continue passing around disease. One opossum like Grizz can eat 5,000 ticks in one summer season. So they're pretty awesome at getting rid of those ticks, which kind of makes them health specialists. They like to keep us healthy, which is why we want to keep them around. Now, because she does all of this awesome stuff, like staying out of our way and planting different plants and eating bugs for us, we have a lot of different ways that we can repay her for doing that awesome service and being an awesome neighbor to us. Now, one of those things is just to leave wildlife wild. What that means is that if you come across an opossum in the wild, you can admire it from a distance, but then you just wanna walk away and let it do its thing because we wanna make sure that they're around to do whatever they can. We don't wanna take wildlife out of the wild because it can be harmful. We want them to be around to be able to do their job. So if we leave wildlife in the wild and we just respect them and look at them from a distance, we get to see them and they also get to continue living their lives, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> She's really trying to get in here, which means this is good enrichment. So I'm happy about that. Um, another way that we can help opossums though is to make sure that we secure our trash. Now I hear a lot of stories about people seeing one of these guys in their trash cans so they kind of get a bad rep as being trash eaters, but that's because they like to eat just about everything. So they're willing to, to find anything that smells good and take a look and see if it's food. So if you make sure that your trash is secured, you can even get a bear-proof trash can. That means that these guys will not be able to eat your trash and that they'll have more room in their stomach for those ticks that we don't like. Which brings me to another point, which is to make sure that you don't leave out cat food. A lot of uh, feral cats are found out in Tennessee here, but we wanna make sure that we don't leave out cat food, especially at night, because these guys will end up eating it. And we don't want that because then they're not able to do that awesome job for us of eating those ticks. And it can make them sick. It's not exactly what they're supposed to eat. They're supposed to eat a lot of different things. So if they're just eating your cat food, then they're not gonna be super healthy. So by doing things like just leaving them alone or not leaving out food or securing your trash, those are really, really simple ways that we can repay such an awesome neighbor. Now, Grizz here is getting cuddly with her blanket, I think. So uh, we're gonna move on to any questions that you guys might have. Yeah, I always have to remember to feed the outside cats during the day. So thank you for reminding me of that. Yes, you can definitely feed outside cats during the day. Just don't leave out your food at night. Well, lots of people agree that Grizz is very, very <laughs> cute. She is adorable. She's getting all snuggly in her blankie. These guys are nocturnal like we talked about, so she's fine coming out for a program, but she also likes to be in the dark sometimes. Well, Kelvin would like to know what type of target training does she receive? And then maybe you could just elaborate uh, on her training. Yeah, hi, Kelvin. That's an awesome uh, question. So Grizz here does in, uh, participate in her training program. She's getting real snuggly here. She does target, so she targets to a stick that has a tennis ball at the end, and she's really good at that. Um, and she also is crate trained, so we will hold up a crate, and then she knows to walk into it so we can take her somewhere. She's being extra cuddly today. She also is learning how to come out and do programs like this. So Grizz was a wild uh, opossum. We found her in our grizzly bear exhibit, actually, which is kind of where she got her name, Grizz. So she was wild, and unfortunately she was too young to be left out in the wild. Um, her mother was nowhere to be found, so she was orphaned. And that's how she ended up being an ambassador. So we had to spend a lot of time working to get her this comfortable. You can tell that her trainer, her primary trainer, Aliana, has done an awesome job making sure that she is totally comfortable being out here. And so we worked a lot on making sure that Grizz is just happy and healthy with coming out and she's not stressed out when she comes out to see anyone. And you can see right now that she's not stressed out at all. She's having a ball. <laughs> uh, Dee would like to know, 
How heavy is she and how does she stay fit? Hi Dee, that's an awesome question. Um, I'm not exactly sure off the top of my head how much she weighs. She's only a couple of pounds. She's not super big. She's like a, a cat-sized animal. Uh, she stays fit. She, at night, we can watch her on our cameras, and she goes up and down her enclosure all around. She loves to climb and move. You can see she's very active right now. So she likes to go out and walk around on tables and smell new things. So she's pretty good at walking. Um, that's more of my speed, too. Some of our animals like to run, like our porcupine Frankie. And I'm not as good of a runner as he is, but I'm happy that uh, Grizz here will go out and walk with us. All right, let's see. Robin would like to know where in the zoo does she live? Uh, because she would love to see Grizz. Oh, Robin, that's an awesome question. Right now, all of our ambassador animals like Grizz, the ones that come out for these programs, they do live behind the scenes. So uh, Grizz here and Ross are other Virginia opossums. They live behind the scenes, so you wouldn't be able to see them exactly on a visit to the zoo, but we have them out a lot. So when we reopen on the 23rd, which we're really excited about, you can make sure to look out for these guys being out for programs. Uh, we're doing a lot of pop-up encounters, so stay tuned to figure out for our summer schedule, because she might be out then as well. Um, I like this comment a lot because me and my fiance go back and forth a lot about their names. Somebody said, uh, told you they were called opossums because I always call them opossums because that is what their names are. It's true. The Virginia opossums and all of the opossums that live in North and South America have the O in front of their name. Now, it's pretty much a colloquial thing, so it depends on your area. A lot of people do just call them possums. But there is a distinction from the ones that live in Australia, which are called possums, versus these guys. So all of the opossums, the ones that live in the Americas, they're omnivores, so they're going to eat just about anything. But the ones that live in Australia can eat all sorts of things. Some of them like to eat nectar, some of them are carnivores, some of them are really specific in what they eat, and they look a lot different. All of the ones, all of the possums in Australia, they look wildly different from one another. But all of the opossums that live in the Americas pretty much look like grizz, although grizz is the biggest of them all. It's an awesome question. Um, well, I think grizz has just about destroyed her enrichment and had a great time, but she's probably ready to go cozy back up for a nap. So I want to thank you guys again, and just remember that you can do lots of things to help out these awesome neighbors like grizz, because our neighbors come in all different sizes and shapes just like Virginia opossums. But thank you guys so much for joining us today. Grizz obviously had an awesome time, and so did I. So we'll see you guys.